All right, so these are the notes for factoring quadratics when a is not equal to 1. Okay, so we're still going to follow these steps for steps to factoring. The first step is to ensure that it is in standard form, which is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, which it is. Next, we're going to factor out the greatest common factor if you can. So in terms of the coefficients and constants, 5, negative 17, and 6 have nothing in common. They're only divisible by 1. Now we take a look at the variables. The first term has an x, so does the second term, but the third term does not have an x. Next, we're going to look for special factors, but we'll go over that in the next notes. Then we're going to use the x method to factor, and then we're going to write the factors, including the GCF, if we find one. Okay, so for the first one, we decided, or we found out that there was no GCF. So we're going to identify what a, b, and c are. a is in front of the x squared term, which in this case is 5. b is in front of x, which is negative 17. And c is the constant, which is 6. Now we draw the x for the x method. b is negative 17. a, we divide by is 5. And to get the bottom number, we multiply a times c. So 5 times 6 is 30. Now, if you have a hard time finding factors, um, I just write out usually a, like a little factor thing here. Um, I start with 30 on the bottom. I need two numbers that add to negative 17 and multiply to 30. So I figure out the factors of 30. And then I add those together and subtract them to see if I, which ones give me 17. So for 30, we know 1 times 30 is 30. So 1 plus 30 is 31. That's not right. 30 minus 1 is 29, so that doesn't work. So now I go on to the next one, 2 times 15. 2 plus 15 is 17, so now I know it's 2 and 15. And then from here, it's negative 17, so in order to make this negative, I make them both negative, and that works. So negative 2 minus 15 is negative 17. Negative 2 times negative 15 is positive 30. Next thing we do is we simplify, so negative 2 or 5 cannot reduce, and 5 does not go into negative 2 evenly. The second one, 5 goes into negative 15 negative 3 times, okay? Now we write our factored form or intercept form. So this is minus 3, and we're going to write that as x minus 3. For the second one, since the 5 cannot reduce or go evenly into 2, we take this 5 and we move it in front of the x. So this is going to be 5x, and then this sign is minus 2, so 5x minus 2 is my answer. Okay, on to the next one. So again, is it in standard form? Yes. Is there a GCF? 3, 20, negative 7, no. X, X, no X, so no. Now we identify A, B, and C. So A is 3, B is 20, and C is negative 7. X method. B goes at the top, which is 20. We divide by A, which is 3. And on the bottom, A times C. So 3 times negative 27 is, sorry, 3 times negative 7 is negative 21. Um, factors. So I'm going to use 21 because that's the number at the bottom. Two numbers that add to 20 but multiply to negative 21. So factors of 21 are 1 times 21. So 1 plus 21 is 22. That doesn't work. 21 minus 1 is 20. So we got 21 and 1. So 21 minus 1. Okay. And when you multiply it, it is negative 21. So now we reduce. 21 divided by 3 is positive 7. And negative 1 third does not reduce. And 3 cannot go into negative 1. Okay, since this is positive 7, that's going to be x plus 7. And for the second one, 3, we swing it in front of the x, so 3x minus 1. All right, on to the next problem. So standard form, yes. GCF, they have nothing in common. So let's identify a is 7, b is negative 20, and c is negative 3. So don't forget the sign that goes with it. x method negative 20 on the top, dividing by a, which is 7. 7 times negative 3 is negative 21. So let's use 21 again. <clears throat> Factors, 1 times 21. So 1 plus 21, 22. 21 minus 1 is 20, so we know it's 21 and 1. But this time it's going to be negative 21, because negative 21 plus 1 is negative 20. Multiply them, you get negative 21. So let's go ahead and reduce. Negative 21 divided by 7 is negative 3. 7, uh, 1 seventh does not reduce. So my first one, minus 3, so x minus 3. 7 swings in front of the x, so 7x, and that's a positive 1. All right, so 
you can see they're all consistently the same. Now the next two examples, let's take a look at these. Um, first off, is it in standard form? Yes. Do we have a greatest common factor? Actually, we do this time. We can see that 10, 32, and 6 are all divisible by 2. So then 2 times 5x squared is 10x squared. 2 times 16x is 32x. And 2 times 3 is 6. Okay. So from here, we're going to identify our A, B, C. So A is 5, B is 16, and C is 3. So now we have the X, 16 on the top, divide by A, which is 5. We multiply A times C, which is 15. Um, here, once again, you can do 15 and 1 times 15. So 1 plus 15 is 16, so we now know it's 1 and 15. Um, we're going to reduce. 1 fifth does not reduce. 15 divided by 5 is 3. Okay, so once again, let's refer back over here. Step 5. Write out factors including the GCF. So in this case, the GCF we got first was 2. And then I like doing the ones that reduce first. So positive 3, that's going to be x plus 3. And 5 does not go into 1, that cannot reduce. So 5 swings in front of the x, 5x plus one. There you go. And for the last example here. Standard form, yes. GCF, yes. They're all divisible by three. So three times three x squared is nine x squared. Three times five x is 15 x. And three times negative 12 is 36. Let's identify A, B, and C. So B on the top is 5, divide by A is 3, and then A times C is negative 36. Um, so for this one, so my first factors would be 1 times 36. So 1 plus 36 is 37. 36 minus 1 is 35, so it doesn't work. Uh, 2 times 18. 2 plus 18 is 20. 18 minus 2 is 16. That does not work. So let's try 3 and 12. So 3 plus 12 is 15. 12 minus 3 is 9. That doesn't work. Let's try 4 times 9. Uh, 4 plus 9 is 13. 9 minus 4 is 5. There we go. So 9 minus 4. Okay. 9 minus 4 is 5. 9 times negative 4 is negative 36. 9 divided by 3 is 3. Negative 4 thirds does not reduce. So last, we're going to say, don't forget your GCF. So 3 parentheses, that's a positive 3, so x plus 3. And then 3 does not go into negative 4 evenly, it reduced, so 3x minus 4. Alright, and the last thing I wanted to talk about was the steps to solving, right? So pretty much, once you factor everything, you can actually solve it pretty easily. Set each factor equal to 0, and solve for x. So in order to set it equal to 0, um, it actually has to have a variable letter x or whatever variable you're solving for. So let's just take this example right here. So 3 times x plus 3 times 3x, oops, let's fix that, 3x minus 4 equals to 0. So this 3 right here, we can't do anything with it. Like you could literally divide it at the very beginning. And then you're left with x plus 3 times 3x minus 4 is equal to 0. So now we set each of these factors equal to 0. So x plus 3 equals 0, 3x minus 4 is equal to 0, and we solve for x. So this one, I subtract 3 from both sides, x equals negative 3. This one, we add 4, so 3x is equal to 4. To isolate x, we divide by 3, and x equals 4 thirds. So that's how you get your solutions. Now for this one, if this happened to have an x, then we would have another solution, but since it does not, there's no variable there, so we can't set it equal to zero. And those are my two solutions.